What have you been up to? Yeah, we've had uh, QBE, which is one of the, the biggest RFU sponsors, so we've just been doing some, uh, some work with them in terms of a bit of archery and a, and a few bits of bobs, really. Nice to get away from, from rugby and, and just have a little bit of afternoon to relax, really. Did you say a bit of archery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how good were you? Uh, not too good. Uh, there's, a, there's a few forwards that had a bit more longer, uh, longer levers to work than, than myself and, and the other scrum halves and, and, and back. So uh, I wasn't too sharp, but nonetheless it was good. And as I say, it was nice to, uh, to do something new and, and refreshing, really, before, obviously, the big two weeks to come. Yeah, because as things stand, as we said, you're on target for a Grand Slam. And when you're bumping into sponsors, you're bumping into fans, you're bumping into fans of rugby, is all the talk about a Grand Slam? Uh, or are you just trying to revert the talk? To Italy, not getting ahead of yourselves. Definitely within the squad, you know, obviously, you know, the first things up is, is Italy at home, which is, you know, obviously they turned over France. It's going to be a, another big challenge for us. It's one we're looking forward to again. Hopefully, it's sold out Twickenham. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we can't get ahead of ourselves. It's one game at a time. It's the old cliche, but uh, you know, Italy's up, and, and we're looking forward to it. Always pressure playing for your country, but as you begin to win and people begin to talk about the possibility of a Grand Slam, the weight of expectation increases. How are you personally handling that kind of pressure? Are you feeling it? I mean, obviously, there's obviously going to be a huge amount of expectation within the, within, uh, outside the squad, sorry, but within the squad, there's expectation. There's obviously a huge amount of pressure to make sure that we perform individually and collectively as a side. So we're always putting pressure on ourselves, um, which helps us really to be able to deal with, with the situation that's obviously coming around the corner. You know, hopefully, if we win against Italy, then, you know, obviously, there's going to be a huge amount of talk about a, a possible Grand Slam. But uh, it's one game at a time for us, as I say, and we'll continue to put pressure within the squad to make sure we're getting the best out of each other. And Stuart Lancaster continues to get plenty of praise as well. How, how does he go about helping you as a squad, as, as a team, to cope with that pressure that just gets ratcheted up every little bit as you keep on winning and you head towards that final game against Wales? How does he help you as a team deal with it? Yeah, I mean, the, the best way to deal with it, again, is, is just keeping sure that everyone's feet on the ground, making sure that we're training hard and, and moving forward as a squad, and, and that's the main goal. You know, we've we continued to, to use the, the last New Zealand game as a springboard for the last three games, and we're going to make sure the last three games are another springboard for Italy and then hopefully Wales. So, um, as I say, you know, it, it's just about collectively as a squad buying into the challenge that lays ahead, but also not getting ahead of ourselves, which I'm sure this squad won't. Owen Farrell having a terrific Six Nations so far. What's the latest on his injury. How's that progressing in terms of recovery? Yeah, Owen's doing well, but obviously, you know, Floody came on and, and, and had a tremendous sort of 20 minutes as well. So, obviously, at fly half, we've got a great depth uh, in that position. You know, Toby's got 55 odd caps, I think. And, um, you know, if he comes in and plays, I'm sure he'll do a great job as well. And, and Owen's obviously been a rock for us over the last few games. So, uh, as I say, you know, luckily we're fortunate to have a huge amount of uh, depth in that, in, in that department. And does that help you? Because you're playing alongside someone in Farrell who's playing really well at the moment. But if he doesn't make it, then you could be alongside a teammate as well. Does that make your life that bit easier in terms of preparation for games? I think, yes, for myself and Danny, obviously, to, to play alongside it, either 10, it, it, you slot in pretty easily. Obviously, we have a huge amount of reps uh, in, in training to play with both of them. But uh, you know, obviously, playing with, uh, with Toby at, at club level helps that sort of um, understanding as such. But, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying my rugby and, and, and playing with whoever is, is, is always uh, great fun. It's always a new challenge. And, you know, as players, you want to be testing it. It tests you to obviously, you know, get that whole sort of role going very quickly. How do you handle the, the competition? For your place in the side because Stuart Lancaster said he's willing to make changes even if his side wins. How, how do you handle competition for your particular place in the side? Do, do you relish it? Does it up your game? Yeah, I think it, you know you, you have to make sure that you know you're pushing each other, which obviously myself and Danny are doing, and it brings out the best in both of us. So you know there's always going to be competition in any position, uh, and obviously for myself and Danny will continue to to fight for the shirt. And uh, but as I say, I think it's a good thing. It, it brings out the best in each other. It makes sure that we train hard and uh, continue to work to try and be the best that we can be. Now our reports today that the club teammate Tom Croft is uh, fit enough to play once again every week. Could you see him making a late run for the England squad before the Six Nations finishes? I think obviously Crofty's uh, is, is great news for, for, for rugby, uh, great news for obviously him, Leicester and, and England. So, you know, I think, you know, he'll get a couple more games down him and I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's involved uh, at some point, you know, down the line again. Um, you know, and uh, for him, I think it's just about getting back out there and just getting a lot of 80 minutes down him and, and week in, week out and just getting used to playing again because it's been a long time since he's played. 
It's been just over 12 months, I think, since Stuart Lancaster took charge of the England team. Obviously, results have changed. What's been the single biggest change within the England setup since he took over? I think probably we have an identity within the squad now and a, and a culture, a really strong culture. So they're, they're probably the biggest things for me is, is, you know, everyone's working very hard within the goal to, to 2015 and everyone's brought into that and, uh, and working very hard. And, you know, I think we have such a, a sort of core of, of, of leaders now and, uh, and the culture is driven right throughout the squad. And, and because of that, you know, we have good ethics, you know, work hard, very hard on training ground and, and make sure that performance takes care of itself, hopefully at the weekend through the work that we do during the week. Now, I know you've already said, as we'd expect you to say, because that's what sport is about. It's about concentrating on the next challenge. But beyond that, already the noise coming from the valleys is about Wales unhinging England in that final game and denying a possible Grand Slam. If, of course, you go on to beat Italy, there could be a lot riding on it for Wales as well. Is any talk of that game as things stand banned or is minds beginning to think about that game against Wales after Whitley? Mm. Uh, I think, as you know, straight after the Italy game, once the whistle's gone, I think all folks will be on, be on the next game. But as I say, you know, it's one game at a time. You know, it's, it's the same at club or wherever you are at level. Um, you know, it's one game at a time. But, you know, as I say, I think Wales and England has always been traditionally a huge game and it'll be no different this time, especially with us, obviously, coming to Cardiff. You must be thinking about it, though, in those quieter moments away from the England set-up. No, no, I think, you know, as I said, because of the culture we've got now within the squad, I think uh, it's to make sure that we're very, you know, feet on the ground and we continue to work hard. And, you know, Wales won't be there unless we do the job on Italy first. So, uh, as I say, once Italy's out of the way and, and hopefully we get the result there, um, you know, we'll con con continue to, to focus on, uh, on, the, on the next game, which will, will be Wales. Well, Ben, well done on the archery and thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. We wish you well in the next two games to come.